If you don't know how to build a boat, can you still build a boat? And I want to make absolutely clear here that I do not know what I'm doing. Seriously, I had to Google complex nautical terms like mast and rudder. How is this happening? I'm building a Viking boat. Sounds kind of generic, right? Which shape and size Viking boat is fun to build? So this was a super fun part of the process for me. There's like four variables here. First is these boats are built in different sizes from a like backyard to person fairing um, to a let's raid America's coasts longship. The second thing is that there are regional differences. At a first glance they may all look alike, but the height and the width, the building method, the plank layout, materials, they all re reflect the specific fjords that a boat originates from. And these differences will be functional, like a lower front end works for rowing against the wind in inland fjords, and a higher front end will work when you're sailing on coastal waters. And the third thing is the period you're talking about. Um, at a certain point the side rudder was replaced by a back rudder, so that was an innovation. And then later still you got linen sails first, but they were replaced by cotton sails. So for every local boat tradition, and there are many of those, you have older and newer models um, and they will differ some. Sometimes the model was changed because the type of fishing changed, or sometimes it just changed because it did. As you can see in the picture of the famous Viking ship, the Gokstad ship, the small Gokstad ship and the replica of the Halsnoy boat, dating back to 200 after nil, and sporting this awesome soon construction, you can see that in all those years of development, not much really has changed. Fourth is the interior. There are a few different ways to place the benches in a boat, depending on whether you normally transported fish or humans or something else. Right, check out the sizes. You can just divide them in the number of rowing stations. The width to length is basically fixed, so a longer boat will also be wider. Two is sort of the reference size on the left here, and you mostly call that a fairing or a tow-roaring. Um, it's mainly for rowing and it's too small for my family for sure. The two and a half, um, you call it a melfairing or a hunderumsfairing, and it adds a little length and an extra middle room for storage of a fish or a dog, hence the name dog room fairing. The two rowers have much more space to stretch their arms and the boat is a bit more suitable for sailing. I was totally tempted to go for this size. Um, here I made a drawing of how crowded it would be with my family of five, a dog and camping gear. My wife did push for a little bigger though. The next size up is three, trerring or sexering. Yeah, the names are confusing, don't get me started. This is about 19 or 20 foot. From this size on, sailing is primary and rowing is what you do when sailing is not possible. There is a Norwegian sail saying, the Lord has much power over wind and water, but three rowers in the trerring also pack a punch. And then it goes up, three and a half, four, five or bigger. And it sounds as if five, a fembering, is only double the size of a two and a half, but that's not true. These are big ships suitable for large groups. So we settled for a three, trerring size, 20 foot. A larger boat is also safer on bigger water, which was a concern for me. I grew up around sheltered lakes, but the water we now have close to our house um, is coastal inlets and they can have big waves, high winds. So safety was a concern for me. On the other hand, I want to transport the boat on the trailer, so too large was also impossible. 
The regional design differences. That was hard to figure out, man. You try googling stuff in Old Norwegian when it's not your native language. So I wasn't going to pick a historical design and copy it. I was looking for a boat that would be fun for us, for my family. We're recreational sailors, not very good ones, I might add. Um, and we're not much of a rowing club. So I am probably going to be rowing it single-handed. And I was terrified of drowning my entire family plus a dog. So stability was a big thing for me. Also, I wasn't looking for a super regional specialty boat, but more one that would have the most common design features in Scandinavian lapstrake boats. So not the unusual offward style removable planks, good for hauling in fishing nets, and also no asymmetrical ra sail, but you know, things that you would see on most boats. For hull shape, we went for a long straight keel for grip and for tracking, rather than a curvy one for agility. Um, this has to do with the fact that we want to primarily sail it and it doesn't have a dagger board or center board. Also I wanted high sided for dry boating in wind and I preferred a bit deeper in the water and a lot of initial stability. And then very little bells and whistles in the form of special gunwale designs etc. Now I expected a back rudder to work a lot better than a side rudder. Also the side rudder is hard to remove um, for use on, our, on my trailer behind the car. So we went for this ultra modern post 1700 innovation, the back rudder. But the sail was still going to be linen to compensate for that. One thing I did, uh, drawing on the Sunfjord models, is give the front more volume than the back. That gives the boat more front flotation, meaning it will ride big waves higher. And these drawings that you see here are not actual building plans, but they were made after an existing boat. So they measure an old boat and then they draw an image like this. And for me this was super duper useful though, um, just to get an idea about, for instance, how high your rowing station should be above the benches, etc. Now, in the end, the design was not just a random Frankensteining of different regional elements, because there was one boat in particular that inspired me most, the so-called Miesweer Ottring, that's a size 4, uh, I was going to build a size 3, of course. Check out these seriously X-rated boat pictures. The Miesweer region, um, they, these, these boats fall under the larger umbrella of Nordland's boats. Uh, with their long hulls, square sails, and I like those a lot. So I like to think that a boat builder from the early 1800s, say, from that region, could have designed the Tre Röring that um, I'm building. Now the interior, also something I, I spent nights in my bed thinking about. Traditional interior means rowing benches, removable ones, um, and possibly U-benches in the back and sometimes also in the front. So here you see the fairing on the left, uh, that's the two-person two boat. It has three benches but only two rowing stations. So that gives you several seating options. It's possible to sit on the back bench facing forward and row with a pushing motion. Um, or if you're alone you can sit in the middle bench facing backwards and rowing that way. Two rowers facing backwards are uncomfortably close together and uh, one rower can power this boat just fine. So next to that is the Melfering or Hunderumsfering with two benches in the middle close together. They form the Hunderum and then uh, the boat next to that on the right is the Tre Röring um, where you can row with three people and on the far right the Halfjärde Röming, three and a half and uh, this has an added half room for storage. Now in this drawing you see the same sizes with variations that exist. In the Hunderomsfering you can see that the back bench is omitted. This is something that happens. Um, they're removable in any case. And for net fishing it's nice to have some more space in the back there. 
In the Treröhring, you can see that the Hunderum interior with the smaller room in the middle is built into this larger boat. And this variant is sometimes called a Storferring. Stor means big. The Halfjärde Rumming has um, the not unusual addition of U-benches and that makes better use of the space for seating people. And the U-benches could be added later to existing boats, um, for example if they were used to row people to church. Now and in the final design that my wife and I settled on, we combined all of these variants in a Treröring size boat with U-benches front and back and a Hunderum in the middle and with the back bench omitted. So we did all the bells and whistles. Um, under the U-benches um, I uh, would like to create waterproof compartments for flotation and as a completely modern addition I want to build a water ballast in the entire floor and in the Hunderum. Water compartments um, okay, so the water ballast, ballast is a modern thing, but water compartments have been existing for centuries. Um, ever since people figured out, hey, live fish keep better than dead fish. So uh, that's it. I changed some stuff. Blasphemy! But then again, Vikings were maybe less concerned with a safe place to put the wine bottle. Thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. And look out for the next installment. See you guys!